Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Steve Oliver. I'm the director of the Rittenhouse Square Fine Arts Show. Um, and I'm here to introduce you to Julie Zahn. Uh, our art show, of course, has gone virtual this year. Um, in the virtual edition uh, of the September show, we have artists representing 27 states. Um, however, Julie comes from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So she's, she's right around the corner from the square. Um, and she's a mixed media artist, is that correct? Mixed media? So yes. Can, yeah, mixed media artist and take it away, Julie. Thank you, Steve. So it's, I'm very happy to be part of the Rittenhouse Square Fine Art Show this year. I participated last year and I had, I was so impressed with how they ran the shows. With the keep our work in the booth overnight, they had security around the clock. It was so much fun. Um, so I'm sorry that it's not actually down there on the square in that beautiful section of Philadelphia. Uh, but this is my studio. It's attached. It's a little building next to my house, a two-story carriage house, uh, about 110 years old. And um, it's very versatile. So I have a press. So we can just see I've got a nice uh, little press to do monoprints and uh, anything else that I want to run through the press. Um, but mainly these days I, I do woodcut and I do Japanese stencil dyeing. And I make um, uh, pictures using those uh, things. Right now I've been working on a, a commission piece. I'm giving them a choice. Um, so this is mixed media at its, you know, it definitely uh, not finished yet, but I'll show you how I attach work. I've got some woodcut areas, some painted areas, some, um, let's see, any katazome in here, katazome areas, um, and I'll show you all of how I do those things. So uh, first we're going to have a very quick slideshow of what I call my COVID bird series. Um, as soon as COVID hit, I, you know, I had the panicky few weeks like everybody. And then I decided to buckle down and get to work and do birds like at a faster pace than I was doing before. So um, my co-host will now show you a, a, a little PowerPoint of about, maybe it's 24 pages, about 30 images. So, okay, Sophie, you're gonna take it away. Can you see? Like to see what here. Yeah. Oh, good. Oh, okay. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, um, and if I'm going too fast, please speak up. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, why don't I describe a little bit? Um, this is a lot of woodcut with a little baby bird called the first jump. <laughs> you know, these birds just kind of call out to be somewhere. I mean, you have no idea how much fun doing these is. It's just a ball. Okay, next. Okay, that's like, uh, that's a little woodcut on the bottom left and this a uh, gross beak. Um, they're not very accurate in terms of, well, this is a cardinal on the left. Um, I have a family of cardinals living in my yard, so I'm so inspired by them. And then on the right, that's a large piece. You can maybe, um, maybe oh shoot. Um, this is uh, a larger piece, so you have to look closely to see the two gray birds in there. Hmm. All right, keep going. Next, uh, this is um, a piece that really happened. It's the moon shape. I use this, uh, this moon shape in quite a bit of my work. Um, I'm happy with that piece, actually. It just fell together. Okay, this is a rather larger piece, two crows. Um, uh, it w it's got a nice composition, I think, with that gray kind of. The, the relationship between the two crows and the background is that 
triangular piece is important. Uh, so, okay, and the, this has some ink on the left. Um, these two birds have a lot of similarities. That's why they're put together here. Um, and the background, I'll tell you the background, that gray color that I use a lot, that's sumi ink uh, mixed with a binder of soy, soy, which is um, soybean soaked. And then I learned that technique in, in Japan. It, I use it all the time with how to bind pigments. And it becomes as um, impervious as um, a polymer, like acrylic. So it's a great tool to use in. I use it all the time, my work. All right, next, Let's see. All right, that's got the same, that background is a, a pigment, a, a red pigment that I got. Um, you can only buy these things from a couple of places in the Western world. Um, and that combines some, the bird is made up of a woodcut um, and then paint, you know, true mixed media, but on the simple, simple composition. That is, uh, the background is Kachizome, uh, which I'm gonna demonstrate in a few minutes. Um, okay, keep going. And these two, um, well, what to say? One is the cardinal with the cricket at the bottom. I don't know if you can see that little black cricket. Um, I have a lot of crickets in my yard. <laughs> they, they, I don't know, they just feed my imagination. I just started doing crickets. Um, uh, I'm very interested in entomology now. And everything I do is kind of to help the insects so that they can also help the birds. And it's just a beautiful world we live in. So we better, you know, really take it seriously. Okay, next. That is, um, it's got uh, the Kachizome that I used on a Torinoco paper, which uh, I'll have to explain. This Torinoco is a very, very high quality paper and you can peel it off many layers. That's how I got that translucent quality. So, and it's also the pigment sticks make the blues, the different blues. Okay, next. And, uh, I was working on the uh, shading of that, you know, try to make it dark into light. Um, just rough, rough kind of idea for that. Um, but I like it, it's okay. Okay, next. Okay. Um, these are, you know, a lot of Kachizome in these two, which I'll explain in a little bit. Okay, next. That's a lot of woodcut, two birds on gold. I started to, well, I like to combine paint and ink so you can put acrylic down and then you can print on top of it so you get a richness, more of an interest, more painterly. I'm really a painter more than a printmaker. So I use prints in as painterly a way as possible. But I, I love the lines that you can get in, you know, like, for the woodcut, you could only get that carving. And same with Katazome. You, um, yeah, so next, we're almost done here. Okay, that is Katazome and um, just painted paper to make the birds. Okay, these two. They're a nice pair because it looks like the sword on the left and the shield on the right with the birds in front. I like, uh, that was, not not intentional, but that's what it looks like to me. Okay. More Katizome, the birds. Okay, next. And similar. Okay, next. Okay, Cardinal on the right. And um, I like, yeah, you might may have noticed my birds are posing. Um, I like the idea that they're posing. You know, they don't really do that. They're always flying around. It would be almost impossible to sit and draw one from life. Um, but I try to get the essence of the bird. 
that's okay next and that's the last mm. that's a bird looking out over the horizon this is the only piece i used a piece of um origami paper i just because i just was experimenting but normally i make all of my own paper every every pattern paper and painted paper etc okay thank you for for looking at that <clears throat> And uh, now I'll just show you um, how we make one of those. First, I stretch paper. I use, um, uh, is there a water bottle statue or something? Right here. Oh, okay, thanks. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thanks. You're welcome. So you spray your paper so that it expands, and then you use paper tape spray both sides and then tape it down and it dries very flat. And then that is your substrate and you can then use glue, you know, glue your, your paper down. I'm gonna just uh, show you a quick demo of the um, Katazome. This, there's, um, there's a video about how to make this. Um, I had somebody film it. Um, this is the resist paste. Katazome means, kata means shape, zome or some means to paint. So you make stencils, and I, I make quite a few stencils. Um, this, is, this is an example. I use mylar. And uh, I cut, you know, I draw on it and then cut out where I want the paste to go through. So that's, it's a, um, so I do these, and I'm going to show you how to spread the resist paste. Now, um, you make a little sandwich, basically, of your paper. You have to use a good quality paper that will take the soaking of the paste, because you have to soak it off for a couple of hours. And then you stencil, put the stencil down on top of the paper, and then your screen. The screen keeps the paste from damaging the stencil and it gives it a little bit of depth, it gives the paste some depth. And I'll show you why that's important. Now, the resist paste you make in, in your kitchen using, um, using mochi, which is mochiko, which is uh, a glutinous flour, which um, just rice flour. And it's what they make mochi cakes out of. It's just very fine. And it, it creates that uh, very, it's extremely sticky. And then you have your um, a little, so you make the, you, um, you sift it many times and then you make um, these little donuts. You steam them for about, about 45 minutes. And then you start making this paste out of it. It's, it's a whole process, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, but the end result is you have this great stuff that is non-toxic, it's like peanut butter. And um, you make it a nice, <clears throat> I need to work it up for a minute so that <clears throat> you kind of see how, what I want to demonstrate to you is Look how it sticks together when you bring it up, like the ribbon sticks together. And that's the glutinous quality of it. And um, anything you do, any, any line you cut, is gonna be, um, it's gonna take the paste. Okay, so you put down a, a blob of that and then you spread it through the stencil. And the first time, you know, you've gotta use a fair amount of of pressure, you use a fair amount of paste. The first time you can use these stencils over and over. Um, and this is a old textile dyeing technique that I use on paper. But they're still doing this in Kyoto, making, you know, the pat making obis, very high quality kimono obis using this technique. They spread it over and over and over like that. So that's how you get your pattern. And just spread it. 
and I'll show you when we lift this up, you'll see what we're talking about. In case I'm not making a lot of sense. <laughs> but, so, okay, and then smooth it out like this. And just go right up to the edge and now you lift your stencil and this is what you have now this is a pattern I'm, I'm working on so that is the dry I mean the 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 resist paste right there um, and then you can do this again and again you know make a pattern uh, make, make an addition Okay, so once this is dried, you paint it, and that can take a long time, but because, you know, you're, you're painting, you're working on your composition. And then at the end, you, you soak it in water. So all of this, everything that I spread on there, that soaks off. That is simply there to protect the paper and to, you know, give you the edges where you're painting. So a finished one, for example, would be, oh, well, there's one there, but that, um, that pink one, it's kind of interesting. I mean, cause that uses the same stencil. Yeah, there you go. That is um, part of that. Okay, and another one would be over there. That, that. The yellow. <laughs> yeah, that's one that uses, so you can see how like this is the stencil for this piece so see how the moon like that little round would go right there that stencil made that piece but it really looks very painterly fabulous technique it really is So, um, I think we're going to go out to um, my booth and, and just look at that for a few minutes and then come back in and I'm going to show you how to, um, how I apply paper, how, you know, the gluing part, the peeling of the paper, all of that stuff. Okay, so let's go out, just come on out here. Um, this is... We just have to go through the garden. Try not to. I don't. Here are the birds. They've really taken over this. They own this place. So I, I set up my booth. Um, this is a mixed media piece with a lot of woodcut and some catazome. You know, that would be catazome. That would be woodcut, paint, you know. But the, the trick is to make it, you know, pull it together. So. This is another mixed media piece. Woodcut patches on main paint. And I'm starting to compose using, like, I pay a lot of attention to uh, rectangles and how they interact with each other. And that's, that's what interests me right now. So, and then I have a series of landscapes that I've, I did up in Maine. So these are little. Um, seascapes with the rocks and the ocean and it's a very inspiring place up there just incredible and 
and then I hid, um, I'm showing some birds, bird images, they're framed. I hope the glass isn't um, too glary. This one doesn't have the glass yeah. on so that you can actually see it. Then a pair of crow images, this one and this one. Um, again, that's paint and woodcut and collage. Now this is, uh, I've done a series on, this is the rabbit that my daughter is, <laughs> we, we can actually, if, if she, my co-host's rabbit, who I bunny sit all the time when she's away, doing something more interesting than watching the rabbit. Okay. <laughs> and as you can see, this is Kachizomek, and uh, you might, notice what that is now and this is a two layer so it's on top so the lines in other words aren't so white i did um i'm experimenting with this i it's a very versatile um process it's a way of painting so. okay bluebird Okay, so now we'll go back to my studio. You can ask me, did you show I didn't get one? the bottom one. So oh, okay. Oh, here's some more birds, just a few more. Cardinal and... And hopefully you'll have some questions for me at the end. We can't see your your questions right now because, um, but okay. So this is my booth, and I'm sorry that I'm not here in person. But um, you can ask me questions when we finish the demo in a few minutes. Maybe cover, cover. <laughs> <laughs> my garden is a wild mess right now. I've been so busy working in my studio. I just want to try. The cottage garden. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to put this somewhere to dry. And. Um, I was going to do some work. Um, oh, okay. here's a piece that's been painted, but it hasn't been soaked off yet. So, so you can see that um, this is the dried paste that we just spread, and then painting. You know, you can do nice long strokes and get that kind of um, gesture. That's one of the beautiful things about Kachizome because you can do this kind of thing and then when it, this is soaked off, you know, it's something you could never do if you're just painting or unless you're incredibly skilled, but um, it's a great technique. Okay, so, um, I think it's, is there any way to find out if anybody has any questions, right? This would be a good time. Right? Sophie. Huh? Uh, Sophie to everyone. She asks, Sophie's asking if there's any questions. Oh, good. Were you going to add some paper or show how you add paper or peel um, paper? Yeah. Okay. Just checking. Okay. 
25. Okay, so we've got 20 minutes. Not connected to Zoom. Why am I not connected to Zoom? You have a few questions coming in. Oh, good. Are you going to soak any of the paste off to see the white? Are you going to soak and them? And also, how does the soaking affect the paint, followed up by what paints do you use? Okay, good questions. Um, I, uh, it takes about an hour, over an hour to soak the, the paste off, um, so I'm not going to demonstrate that. Um, but it just reveals the paper again, you know, that you've protected with the resist paste. Um, the best paint to use, well, you use something that won't dissolve in water, you know, so really you don't want to use oil paint because that will, it's not, um, it's going to yellow the paper. You use acrylic paint. I use acrylic, I use flash. Let me just show you a few, few uh, that's a great question. Um, some of my paint. Let me just show you. Uh, sorry. Um, oh, let's see. Some of my tubes of paint. Um, oh, yeah. This is flash. Okay, so what I use, I use either golden acrylics. I use... Um, I use good quality paint, you know, it makes a difference, it just does. Um, I use flash, which is a, a matte, it's a vinyl paint, it's um, really beautiful. And I just discovered another paint, this is very highly pigmented, that's one reason I like it. Um, but I just discovered another kind of paint, because I went looking for, for some flash. And which is very similar if you look at like that color. I was looking for this particular color. Um, and I found they a fleur, which is it's it's very similar, um, but it, it is more a little more pastel y, you know. You um and an example of it's a very matte paint. So an example on, on this piece, this section is that slur paint, okay? Or for example, let's see, where's another section? Uh, you can see, oh, right here, this, this beautiful charcoal kind of black. Um, I hope you can see that. It really applies nicely, I like it. So, and the other thing that you can do is use this um, soybean, as I discussed, uh, soybean um, and mix it uh, with the pigment stick or sumi. Um, and I don't have the soybean made right now, but um, I could, uh, probably show you um, just using, you know, this you, you would use in a, um, just a minute, yeah, you would just put some water in and you do the same thing with the other, you would just be using a soybean mixture. So you just grind the pigment into whatever binder you're using. In this case, we're just going to use water, which makes an ink. It's an ink, but it wouldn't bind, you know, cure on paper the way the soybean does. It has a protein quality, like milk. I mean, I could probably use defatted milk, I've been reading. Um, but I go with the Japanese method. Um, this, for example, this piece was all done with the, the soy. Um, and you can see it's got like a, a shiny quality, slightly shiny quality that um, because of the way the protein cures on it. So, 
there's a lot of chemistry, you know, in art. That's what it's about. A lot of, uh, it's so important, your um, materials and techniques is what really interests me in art. So, um, are there any other questions? There um, is. Um, okay. Charlie Ann asked, how do you manage to get such depth in your work? For example, the works on the wall behind you. Aha, uh -huh. how to get depth in them? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I'm working with, uh, you know, horizontals and, um, well, I do a lot of layering, but uh, one thing, you know, you can kind of bring things forward and push things back. Um, so uh, it's really a process of just experimentation. It's really important to me to keep my work fresh and I go in it uh, every time wondering what's going to happen. <laughs> so, you know, that's what makes it really kind of like you're on a high wire half the time. You don't know what you're doing, but that keeps it fresh, really. And uh, so I hope that answers that question. But um. You can, you know, shading, and uh, I'm glad you think that the work has depth. That makes me feel really good. I think this piece definitely does have depth, and, and in part it's because of the way the horizontals work together. And, and pieces like this, you know, kind of push back and then pick up again. And, um, this, oh, I'm going to show you how I glue things on. I don't want to really do uh, work on these um, during and the deck. Can you talk uh, about how people can purchase your work and the range of prices? Yeah, um, on my website, you there's a PayPal um, attached to my website and my prices range from, for the small pieces uh, that are, you know, like those birds out there, they range from about 350 up to, um, you know, the big pieces are in the a few thousand, uh, several thousand uh, dollars, these catches only. But, you know, I frame them. I do all my own framing. I have, uh, I have a good person who, who sells me molding. Um, he supplies, say, Seven Arts with all the frame, with all the molding and, um, it's really good stuff. It doesn't, um, so I do my framing. And can and you share what your website is so that people can find that? Yeah, my website is juliezahn.net. So just my name.net. And I have another I, question. I have different sections, birds, COVID birds, birds. I have tons of landscapes. I've got some abstracts, you know, so there's a lot on my website. Okay. Yeah. Another question? Yes. Speaking of chemicals, do you ever use any alternative photographic processes? I don't do any photography. So when I'm talking about printmaking, it's it's all hand done. You know, it's maybe woodcut, for example. I mean, you could see, you want to see some of my wood blocks. I I have a lot of wood blocks, and I store tons of wood blocks upstairs as well. Um, but that's all hand printing. So I don't do photography. I don't do any Photoshop. Um, I like the human touch. On I think that's going to last. That the fact that you know, it's important to me. So, any other questions? I would love to demonstrate how I do a collage because it's a really um, interesting process. I um, I worked for an antique screen restorer in Kyoto the year after I graduated from art school. And I went over there to learn about glue and wood and paper, and I really did. It's really informed my, my practice. So this brush is how you adhere, uh, you adhere paper to your 
um, substrate. Um, and I'm going to show you something else that I do that I discovered um, doing these birds. Okay, why? I, I, they're very flat, and the way I get them to be flat is I peel the paper down. I'm just going to uh, go to one of my drawers and get some work in progress. Sorry, I meant to have this set up a little bit better. I just forgot. Um, oh, here, here's a bunch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, here we go. Okay. And can yeah. you show how you tap the brush to flatten the paper? Yeah, that's, I'm going to demonstrate that. And also, do you title your work? Pardon me? Do you title your artwork? Yeah, I generally title my artwork. Like one way I, I have in the past, you know, you do a lot of work, you've got to come up with a lot of titles. Um, I'll go through like a, a great poem or something and, and uh, get phrases. I hope that's not considered plagiarism. Just a, a few words here and there that's, that are evocative of the work. That's um, how I get a lot of my titles. So I will, what I do, I take, take a bird um, and I, tra I trace a lot of birds, okay? I have them on tracing paper. Um, and I make these little kind of stencils. They are used to, um, to find where do I want my bird to come out of the paper. For example, this is a woodcut full of fantastic textures and, you know, so, I, I'm sacrificing the woodcut to get some a bird, for example. So I will take my little silhouette here and I'll move him around until I find I, um, what speaks to me, what, you know, like look at those little feathers or, you know, something like that, for example. And then I'll take the, I'll match up the back and trace it on the back and then cut it out, okay? So that's how I make my birds. Um, you know, it's sort of like, everything takes so much time and I enjoy that, I enjoy the process. See, here's something that I took a couple of birds out of. So, they. <laughs> so where are those birds? I'm looking for, I've got a big pile of birds somewhere that sometimes I just sit and make birds and then find homes for them later. Um, but I do want to show you how I adhere paper, okay? One thing I do, for example, okay, here's, here's a piece that I'm going to add to my substrate paper, my stretched Reeves BFK. I will, this is, I'm going to take it down, I'm going to spray it like this, okay? And now I'm going to peel it. I don't want this big bulky piece of paper on my um, on my collage. So I peel it down like this. Look at look how that comes off. This is actually already glued on, but okay. So you can peel peel that down, and so you you can sit here and get just a very thin layer. That's what I. I like to do. And the better the paper, the thinner it will peel. This is Reeves BFK is excellent paper. It peels right off. Um, another one is um, Tori Noko, I was telling you earlier. It's an incredible paper. I've got a big pile of it here. And it's got a beautiful, this is a piece of that, peeled down to just the very top layer. Um, I might be able to get one more layer out of that. Just, but look at the, the color of that. You know, look how, um, look, 
Yeah, all the different kinds of whites and tans and grays and you know it's, it can be very subtle. Once in Japan for three days, this um, the screen restorer had to find a piece of gold paper for a part of this antique screen. And literally me and the other apprentice and, and he went through uh, thousands of pieces of gold paper, <laughs> holding them up, holding them up, holding them up for hours and hours. And we couldn't find the right gold. And that just showed me, wow, who ever thought that there could be that many shades of gold? It was just mind blowing. Um, so I love that example. It's like the Eskimos have a thousand words for snow. But so so here we are with this peeled, peeled paper, pretty good and thin. And I'm gonna show you how we um how to glue it down now. You will be, I hate to I hate to cut in, but you only have three minutes. Three minutes. Okay, perfect. Okay, so I use a lot of telephone books for awesome paper to make messes on and um here's my my uh my paste wheat starch paste i buy buy it in bulk from a library company up in massachusetts it's the best adhesive uh for my purposes it's um archival you can make batches of it in the kitchen and you know so you spread that paste on like this nice and smooth. You don't need a fancy brush. This is a Worcester paintbrush and it does a very good job. I don't need fancy. Um, so I'm going to take this and this paste is also reversible just so that you can with water. So what I do, so in fact, I'm not really thinking about where I'm putting it. So I'm just you know, if I don't like it where I got it down here, I'm going to reverse it. So I'm going to put it down here. And then just get a little bit of that out. And and then take uh, another piece of um, the good old phone book. And then um, where did my brush go? Oh, here it is. And then you you just brush it down and and then really pound it in. It's very flat, nice and flat, and really melded with that uh, paper, the substrate paper. Okay, so that's. One, one thing you do. I This is how I glued down these um, canvases onto the panels, you know, using uh, big, big batches of, of this wheat starch paste and um, spreading it on the back of the canvas, spreading it on the board, and then pounding it with the brush and then weighting it down for 24 hours under a lot of paper. So um, when I was in art school, I just was constantly talking to the conservators at the academy to find out, you know, how to do things archivally, how to do as much, you know, the more you know, the better quality work you can do. And it becomes very automatic, really, really fun. So, any other questions? Julie, I want to thank you very much. That Thank was you. Very informative, very interesting. Oh, uh, good. You have a very, very distinctive style. Um, oh, thank you. So. so you can reach me via my my website, juliezon.net, if you want to, you know, find out more. Let me know. Okay. And I want to encourage everybody to go to the Rittenhouse Square site as well, rittenhousesquareart.com, and uh, check out Julie's. Uh, gallery there and everybody else's and all the other events and thank you for joining us thanks julie thank you thank, thank you julie, julie. yay thank you julie